What is up down and sideways, all you beautiful people? It is Lee Guy Mock, Eric and Mark here with you beauties for way too early preseason power rankings. LCK edition heading into spring where a couple of teams made zero changes or basically running back the same five, maybe with an extra sub. And then obviously some sweeping changes in that middle of the pack in Korea this year. It's it's a wild ride in the LCK because it's either almost zero changes, 100% changes, or you got something like T1, which we'll get to, which is zero changes, but feels like the most significant change in the league keeping together. The LCK never disappoints. Let's start it out right at the bottom. And it's not just T1. You got Nongshin bringing back pretty much the exact same starting five, maybe with some subs coming in, but it feels a little different when it's a 10th, 9th place team doing it versus the defending world champs. Quite a quite a difference in running it back when you are expected to be 10th place in the league as opposed to the defending world champions. Quite a difference we have in the LCK, but that is where, unfortunately, Nongshim finds themselves with the expectations heading into this year. The returning players, you know, you're looking at, you know, pretty much really putting all your ex expectations, any of your real hopes on someone like Fiesta popping off and finding that, you know, kind of that one week in the year that we always seem to get where he is really strong and does put out that good effort. You're banking on getting that a heck of a lot more weeks than just that one week if you're the Nongshim Red Force. Unfortunately, I don't see it happening outside of that one week in the LCK split. Yeah, when you look at the other nine teams, you're hard-pressed to be putting Nongshim any higher. Even a squad like DRX, who look like they're going full budget reduction with a full developmental year. You have Juhan, who's returning, uh, but Sponge, couple of rookie mid laners. Paddock was the main reason uh, that they're ahead at nine because he had glimpses where you saw the confidence out of him and then of course you feel a little bad for rascal because he has been one of the most criminally underrated and disrespected top leaders for a couple of years now in the lck i think that's the one type of thing that kind of sticks out for these for diehard lck fans is seeing this roster for rascal and kind of going oh man that's our guy he need he needs a little bit more firepower a little bit more punch to be in that conversation with a playoff type team. DRX, I will say at this point, with a player like Paduck, if you are able to continue and hit the jackpot on his development, that could be enough to put you right into that conversation. Could be serious enough of a power. I think he's that good. The question is, are you going to be able to start building and continue building upon those performances from last year for him, that confidence to build up and be able to execute at the level that is required to be a top-tier ADC in the LCK. You never know when you have so many rookies on a squad when you have the next big thing. Maybe the DRX squad surprises everybody and is pushing towards playoffs. Ahead of them, though, right now, you got the OK Freddie Breon bros, which, again... Very familiar, similar to what we got last year. Morgan's coming back. Karis is back. Effort should be there. Envy and Gideon kind of closing around this roster. It feels like it's been the same old story for the bros for going on two plus years now. And that's because it's usually the same faces coming back. It usually is, but now is the time. I think this is it. It's no more memes, no more, okay, bro, No, get it out of the window. It's serious. It's business. It's playoffs or bust. That's where I'm going. It's not play It's not playoffs or bust for a squad like okay. Nah, I don't know what a bust <laughs> is for this team. <laughs> I will say, though, that that is that goal. That is that focus, and I think that this is the time where you start to tighten the screws just a little bit on this group, on this team, and say you got to make that push into playoffs. Try to be one of these teams that shakes up the picture of the LCK a player like Harris in the mid lane taking another step forward, a development in his career would be one of those steps that could help you get there. Looking in the bottom lane, Envy is a player that can provide that type of difference maker as an ADC. And of course, our Lord and Savior, Mr. Morgan in the top lane. We know it is a whole mixed jumbly wumbly bag that we get from him. I feel him. like they're just keeping him for the branding of Lord Morgan more so than anything else. Oh my God. But. I want to see some good performances out of our Lord, not just on 
the Renekton. We need to expand that proficiency pool, my man. If anything, the 2024 brings us, I hope it's less Renekton games across the entire <laughs> globe, not just in the LCK, but everywhere. Really what you want out of these bottom three, four teams in the LCK is some semblance of an identity, some path forward. Where are they headed? Because they have just been stuck in the mud for a couple of splits now. The best chance at doing that is the number seven squad, Liv Sandbox. A few changes. The core is still there. Got closer, Willer, clear, young guy coming in the top lane. Hannah replacing Teddy, which you can argue whether or not that's an upgrade or a downgrade but the exciting move for me is Jong Hoon coming over to the LCK over from no more Astralis no more action in the LEC I'm excited to see him play in Korea yeah this is a big move this is one of the ones that we have talked about this player through the course of his time in the LEC talked about the potential the flashes the glimpses of brilliance that you can see develop brewing in this player that just needs to be unlocked with the right circumstances. I think this is it. Joining the LCK, being exposed to this next level of talent and competition, I think that's where it's going to force it out of him and we're going to see this player continue to polish himself into a top tier support. I love what we saw from him in the LEC. Excited to see it continue here into the LCK. I do have questions as well about Hannah being the ADC replacement for someone like Teddy. I still felt Teddy was, you know, not just serviceable, still a very good lethal option in the LCK when supported properly with the rest of the team. I don't think that this is quite the move that I'd be making in that situation, but keeping the rest of this live sandbox core around, I like that type of move from this organization. And we're still waiting for the closer ascendance to being one of the premier mid laners in the LCK. We might be waiting on that for, I don't know, eternity, but... We, we've seen the flashes of the type of talent, sure. of the potential that has been built there. We have not seen the consistency that, of course, his mentor, Mr. Faker, has quite clearly showcased to us over the course of his career. And he's not alone in that. That's pretty much every player in the history of the game coming up short when you're comparing to the GOAT in the mid lane. Now we get over that playoff bubble into the top six and talking about ascendance. I've said it before. I'm ready, Mark. This is it. The Kwang Dong Freaks. Not only are they making playoffs, this is a conservative six spot for me. I see them potentially pushing for top four this year. Oh, baby. I'd love to see the Kwang Dong Freaks make that type of transition, make that leap, because I know if they're in that conversation, they're in the playoffs and they're looking to jump frog a couple teams in this playoff picture, that's because your man Bulldog has stepped up to the plate and established himself as a top level 80, uh, sorry, excuse me, mid laner in the yeah, LCK. He plays and and carries I'm getting, I'm so. getting all my positions, all my things mixed up, my wordings, but what isn't gonna get mixed up is the skill that Mr. Bulldog has had. And we've already seen that last year in the LCK. He's gonna step it up this year. I think this is really the one. Last year was kind of that glimpse. You saw what you wanted to see. You saw a lot of mistakes too. This year is about cleaning it up, polishing it up and putting forth your resume to say, hey, Showmaker, the rest of the crew, Mr. Chovy, Mr. Faker. I'd love to join that top tier group of LCK mid laners. And he's just such a infectiously happy player. You see him on the rift, he's playing aggressive, he's laughing it up. And now you got Captain Cuz Lightyear coming over to provide the veteran leadership, even if he ends up splitting time with Young Jay. I think him alongside CV Max, this is fully uh, the development experiment, and you're going to see it reap some rewards for the Kwangdong Freaks heading into this year. One of the teams, maybe they're looking to leapfrog, is in the five spot. It is a fully revamped KT Rolster roster. I think most people on paper are going to say this is a downgrade from what you got last year, but KT went 17-1 and one in the summer split, so anything was going to be a downgrade. It, it, it's almost impossible to try and figure out what you wanted really for KT next year, knowing the landscape in the LCK was going to go under such a drastic change. And then to ultimately fizzle out really the success that you saw from that summer split run, pretty much everything outside of picking T1 
in those playoffs and then everything that has followed since then for KT Rolster. Yes, this is a bit of a revamp. One of the things that I think you can bank on if you're a KT fan, and this is something that can go either way, could be that positive, could be that negative. You're looking at Mr. Perfect T in the, in the top lane on what he's gonna do, whether he's gonna be a game changer. You're replacing Keen, a player that was relatively solid for this KT Rolster team and one that has been historically a dominant player in the region. Let's see what Mr. Perfect T's got for us. Yeah, and positive side of things, Keen was underwhelming at Worlds. I don't think it was up to the level that we were expecting. It's a nice balance of youth and veteran uh, leadership. I mean, there's just one Perfect T's, the only youthful player on the squad. But all of a sudden, you got three-fifths of this DRX championship run. Now, Piosic, Barrel, and Deft. I don't think anyone's as high on them as they were during that World Championship run, which people underestimated the whole way through. And then BDD, the only returning player from last year's roster. But I think it's it's a bounce-back opportunity for these three DRX members after last year when everyone was kind of so-so on all of them. And nobody is going to be sleeping on the secret sauce of those three DRX members for this no, next sir. year because everybody knows the Deft and Barrel bot lane duo, the general commander down there, Mr. Barrel, calling all the shots, even calling what you're doing with your player type of situation. Got to be looking out for him. And, of course, then in, on the other side of it, Piosik in the jungle, how he's going to interact with the rest of the squad, specifically BDD. Because Piosik and BDD was not exactly that mid-jungle duo that you first, those first names that come up when you're trying to come through with a unique duo. But I think that this is one that can get on the same page and cause havoc for the enemy team. I'd love to see that. And don't sleep on the post-LCS buff that Piosik is going to get. It's always a level up when they've been brought down by that NA mentality. So looking for uh, a bounce back. I mean, he was great at Worlds. We talked about he was the only star player on Team Liquid for that run. So excited to see him back in the LCK. Not enough for KT to bump into that top four. It seems like this is just the place that D-plus hangs out in the last couple of years. It's going to be a very different looking squad with Canyon no longer there. Lucid getting his long-awaited LCK debut. It's only a matter of time, I think, before Thanatos joins him over Kingen. Aiming coming in gives enough firepower for Showmaker and the rest of the squad that you feel like this is still a top four caliber squad. And I think a player like Aiming kind of is that perfect ADC almost for what you want with a squad like Showmaker because what we have seen in the past about how he can dominate and where you need that support, where you need that extra damage is usually in kind of a quiet, consistent ADC that can pop off. If they're getting those resources, they're getting to stay alive. That type of thing is what I can see from aiming with this D, D plus Kia roster. This is going to be the first time that we're seeing Showmaker without Canyon. This separation of this duo that has been so good, so iconic in the LCK since they debuted. I think Lucid has been a player with quite a lot of hype, quite a lot of a trail record in the you know rising up scene where you can say that, yes, I, I've got confidence in him that this is one of these star potentials waiting to show, show us, waiting to pick up experience at this level until we can throw him right into the top categories type of thing. But you got to put up the results. You got to show out. You got to put it on for show with Mr. Showmaker right beside you in the mid lane. And again, real quick on aiming, feel like this is the most resource hungry aggressive ad carry that showmaker and dom Juan has ever had really historically it's been all about the solo laners on this squad and the bot lane is kind of just hold your own be consistent come out uh during team fights but i'm expecting them to be a lot more focused on that bot lane with aiming which means we'll need a bit of a step up from what we were getting out of kellen in 2023 but a lot of question marks for this d plus squad heading into the new year some question marks for Hanwha Life as well in that three spot, or should we just call them Gen G 2.0? Because the three-time defending champs, three-fifths of their starters just kind of waltz on over to Hanwha Life, Doran, Peanut, and Delight. Viper and Delight immediately. You got to be talking about them as one of the best bot lanes in the league. And we looked at it all last year, so many times checking in with Hanwha Life and all the times that we checked in, 
I'd say nine out of the ten times you're checking in and you're talking about Viper was doing good. Viper was doing what he could do. All these type of things and understanding it. Getting him that little bit of extra boost in playing power alongside Gen G's delight. Yes, that is going to be a good move for this Hanwell Life Squad. And so is going to be Doran up in that top side because not enough has been talked about. The inconsistencies that we also saw with Kingen for this Hanwha Life team. The Hanwha Life that bet big on getting Kingen the MVP of the finals, the eight trucks. And we never saw that ever, ever once for this squad. We never got a continuation of that type of hype. Someone like Doran stepping in. I don't think you're getting world's MVP finals type of level of performance from someone like Doran. But you're sure as heck gonna get a lot more consistency than you did with someone like Kingen. And for a team with Viper in the bottom lane, Zekka in the mid lane, you gotta be able to hold steady in certain spots. Someone like Doran can do that. Someone like Peanut can help get those advantages onto the players that you want on Hanwha Life. And I think Peanut fills a lot of the voids and issues that Hanwha Life had all of last year. And that was just no semblance of cohesion. On the rift, it seemed like communication was always an issue. The macro gameplay, Peanut developed into such a good general during his second stint on Gen G with some of these younger players. So excited to see him fit in. And Doran does look like a World Finals MVP, just only when he matches up against Zeus, which is a double win for Hanwha going up against the big competitor. And again, if you're going to be a top team in the LCK Hanwha life, yes, you better have your sights set on the Team One organization and taking them down. I got no problem getting that contract out for the T1 killer in Mr. Doran. So it's hard to say, is this Gen G version 2.0 or Gen G version 1.0? Because when you look at the actual Gen G roster, you say, okay, well, Jovi Pay's still there. Lahens has been there in the past. But obviously, the big signing is Canyon coming over. Canyon and Chovy, Canyon and Keen, Canyon and Pays. Any combo with Canyon is exciting to see for this squad. And I think everyone, us included, is waiting, hoping, expecting Canyon to get back to that world's champion form where we're talking about him almost always in the conversation as best jungler on the planet. Oh, blessed, blessed Gen G, Arnold. I don't know what I was thinking. I can't believe I doubted Gen G with all the rumors coming Budget through. Cuts? I was, ah. I, I was confused. I was worried that this would be the end, that we would get so close to the sun. We would achieve so much and we would just back down with a couple of failures at the biggest stages. You always got to take your lumps and bruises and you got to get yourself back up. That is exactly what Gen G has done after the most recent failure. They brought themselves back up. They have retooled themselves for another run at the championship, another run at T1, and another run at the rest of the world. This is, yes, I will say this is Gen G 2.0. I think that's just Hanwha life coming to life, I will say, with those roster additions. This is Gen G 2.0 here. Keen Canyon mega, mega additions for this team boosting themselves up into 2023 and because of how worlds ended out all of a sudden all the hype all the happiness for gen g was gone but these are the three-time defending lck champions and the only team that had t1's number at worlds and in the lck so i know it's going to be difficult for pays to live up to his rookie split because he won both splits and went to two international events. But I am excited to see him with the new buddy in the bot lane in Lahans, who maybe won't be at the same level that Delight was, but growth for Pays is only going to make him more of a lethal ADC. I don't think he's going to provide the same safety, the same comfort and consistency that someone like Delight was able to offer for Gen G for Pays in that bottom lane duo. But I think that the explosiveness is absolutely going to be there and dialed up at least one more notch with Lahens in the lineup, the creativity that he brings, the engages that he wants to make happen. He's going to make it happen, whether it's good or not type of situation. And Gen G has got the skill more often than not to turn that in to a good type of situation is one of the things that you're looking at. I love this roster. I love this team taking this shot at it once again in this situation of saying, you know what? This is a back to back to back. LCK champion that has got to prove themselves this year that people will have their doubts. They'll say, yeah, you're back to back to back. 
pretty darn impressive, you know, achievement number one. But they're going to go, I don't give a darn. I don't care about that, you know, stuff. I care about what you've done at these worlds, what these international events, and you have failed. That is the, the, the you know, the, the verdict on your squad. A player like Chovy, we've talked so many times about not being choky. And unfortunately, we had a choky sighting to end the year. So we really need to put forth the best MVP level Chovy this year for Gen G 2.0. Even though they weren't able to beat them in the summer split, it's still T1, the champs, world champs coming in that number one spot, of course, especially somehow Joe Marsh pulls off the miracle to retain all five starters, their synergy. This is a rare mechanical god lineup that is simultaneously better than the sum of their parts and the sum of their parts are some of the best in the world i i need to find out get a tracker on joe marsh because there's no way he gets this done without using the seven dragon balls there's no way that he makes a chance on a wish like this and he gets to come through from t1 unbelievable that they are able to secure this whole returning lineup from the world championship Yes, T1 is back and T1 is here to defend the crown to take the LCK title from Gen G. This is going to be a heck of a domestic split for the LCK coming off of hot off of this world's run. This is a T1 that is looking to, to build and establish a brand new dynasty in the LCK and abroad. This is going to be a big deal. Zeus coming back, all these players with the experience, the knowledge, the confidence that they have gained from finally achieving that title, getting that world championship win, breaking all the demons of all these so far, you know, runner up type of runs and everything else. I don't see T1, you know, being any weaker than they were last year. I see them being astronomically stronger than they were last year, heading into this year. That's why it's a full reset anytime we head into a new year. But you know, T1's going to be motivated as ever. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.